Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some of the recent and quite unexpected discoveries from our neighbor, Mars. The discoveries that came as a surprise to a lot of scientists, and that actually create more questions than answers. And both discoveries come from two different probes. One that seems to be performing really well, the probe known as HOPE, part of the Emirates Mars mission, which is currently in a permanent orbit around planet Mars, and the inside probe that you see right here that's unfortunately not doing so well. As a matter of fact, it's currently on its last legs for one simple reason. The reason you see right here, its solar panels are almost completely covered in Martian dust, which essentially means that the spacecraft might very soon suspend its operations. But nevertheless, in the last few months, it was still able to discover some really incredible things about Mars, and most importantly, completely by accident, kind of complete its main purpose, it was finally able to detect a very strong earthquake coming from Mars itself. And that's of course one of the first discoveries. So what exactly was it? Although I'm calling it an earthquake, it's actually a Mars quake. So we know that Mars has Mars quakes. And for the most part, it's always been believed that these Mars quakes are probably caused by some kind of leftover geological activity inside the planet. Although a little bit more about this in a few minutes. And most of the Mars quakes detected so far and we've actually detected approximately 1300 of them, they've all been relatively weak, approximately 4 on Richter scale. That's a type of a quake that you can barely feel if you were to stand on the surface, with the most powerful quake detected last year being 4.2 on a scale. Now in case you're wondering why these earthquakes are so important for this mission, check out one of the previous videos right there or in the description, but in a nutshell, it's because by listening to these earthquakes and by calculating the velocity of various types of waves inside the planet, it becomes possible to then analyze and even determine its structure. And so by doing this a few months ago, by using like a thousand quakes, the scientists were able to determine and find out some really surprising observations about the Martian core. Turns out the core is a little bit bigger than scientists thought. Which also led to some other discoveries, once again in the video somewhere in the description. But the scientists behind the inside probe have always been hoping for that big one. They were waiting for that big earthquake, because by having more loud or high in amplitude waves, it would be possible to finally discover some other things that were previously invisible to original investigations, including potentially discovering some really strange structures inside Mars. And so for years now, the scientists have been waiting to discover that big earthquake, and finally it came on May 4th. And it had a magnitude of approximately 5. With the detection looking something like this, you can actually see that the ground in this case was moving approximately 1 meter per second, with the seismograph looking something like this. And this is absolutely incredible. This is the strongest quake detected anywhere except for planet Earth, and detected only a few days before the probe might run out of energy. With the total number of quakes now standing at 1313. And all of this is really due to the creativity and persistence of all of the scientists behind the mission. First of all, it's using some of the most accurate and most sensitive devices ever produced. The seismograph in this case is by the Centre National d'Etude Spatiale, an important French agency that provided this particular device. And the fact that the mission had enough energy to detect this is really due to the creativity of the scientists who last year were able to clear some of the dust from the solar panels by essentially trickling down some other dust using the device you see right here, which in essence provided just enough energy to survive for one more year. And because this mission now has been extended until at least December 2022, it might become possible to finally find some really cool things inside Mars itself, maybe some kind of a structure nobody has ever detected, such as for example the blobby structure that we discussed in one of the previous videos once again in the description below, that we know our planet has, and this was very likely a result of a collision with another planet. So if we find something like this on Mars, that would be pretty incredible. But the thing about Mars quakes is their origin. For the most part, today it's not actually believed they're caused through what's known as tectonic activity. So for example, on our planet, generally earthquakes can be either tectonic, meaning that they're related to the plate activity, the plate tectonics, or they're volcanic in nature, or maybe sometimes caused by some kind of a human activity. But since Mars does not have any tectonic activity, most of the earthquakes here, most of the Mars quakes, are caused by volcanism. 
And specifically what we refer to as intrusive volcanism. That's essentially when magma doesn't actually know how to get out to the surface, and essentially by moving around inside the planet, starts to create all sorts of fissures, and then also ends up breaking things, creating earthquakes. But then relatively recently, the scientists investigating a region called Cerberus Fossa, which very likely looks something like this, confirmed that a few earthquakes in this region, based on their low frequency and the amount of repetitions, were definitively volcanic in nature, they could not have been produced in any other way. And so the scientists behind this paper even speculated that maybe Martian volcanoes could still erupt in the future. Even though for the most part we kind of think of this planet as relatively inactive geologically. And also because it's known to have been super active volcanically in the past, with this being the biggest volcano in the solar system, this is Olympus Mons, a mountain that's approximately three times as tall as Mount Everest, detecting potential volcanic activity on Mars should not really come as a surprise. But the question is of course, if it happens and when it happens. Now in the last few years, the scientists have actually found several recent marks of what seems to be a relatively powerful earthquake activity, up to about magnitude 7. And at least one region on Mars known as Arabia Terra is believed to have experienced extremely powerful super eruptions that lasted for 500 million years. Although all of this was like 4 billion years ago. But what's stopping Mars from doing it again? So at the moment, these new studies suggest that it actually is still possible for Mars to once again become volcanically active. Maybe not to the same extent, but at least somewhat active. And if it does become volcanically active, it might actually have certain effects on the atmosphere and potentially even change the climate of the planet to some extent. Maybe even make it slightly more habitable. As a matter of fact, volcanism could have been one of the reasons why Mars was habitable in the past and how it could have liquid water on the surface. That's one of the potential explanations for how it had these huge oceans, even though technically it should have been much, much colder. And so one of the recent studies was actually able to confirm that there were a lot of massive eruptions in the past by discovering certain types of volcanic minerals that usually turn into clay by water. Minerals like emogalite or allophane. And that of course implies that Mars had very powerful volcanic eruptions, it had liquid water, and it obviously also formed clay on the surface. A lot of things that we kind of expect Earth used to have when life was forming on the surface. But there is however one problem with Mars. It looks like a lot of these super eruptions and really really powerful volcanoes for the most part are sort of concentrated in a single region. Now on Earth that's not the case. Volcanoes are present everywhere. But on Mars they seem to be concentrated in certain regions and possibly because, well, first of all there's no plate tectonics, the actual plates don't move, and second of all because they never really got to erode physically unlike planet Earth. And so they simply just accumulated in size and never really got destroyed by anything, nor did they move anywhere else. Nevertheless, the question here is how exactly did such a small planet have so much power to create such powerful volcanoes? And that's of course one question we cannot answer right now, and hopefully we will be able to answer once the data from the super powerful Mars quake gets analyzed and discovers something else on the inside. Okay, so that's Martian geology. But then something else was discovered above Mars, something that we've never seen before, anywhere. And okay, Kirby excitement. It's not aliens, it's nothing really too extreme. But it is something we've never seen on any other planet, the so-called Sinus discrete aurora you see right here. And this is of course related to that other aurora discovered last year by the same mission, the UAE's HOPE mission, they discovered that Mars seems to have very strange aurora on the night side of the planet, mostly because of the way that the uh, remnants of the magnetic field interact with certain particles from the sun and cause certain regions to produce aurora that are definitively visible in ultraviolet light. And on a clear night on Mars, it might even be possible to see this with our own eyes. Because it's not just UV light, it's also a little bit of optical light. But the aurora have been discovered in the past, and these aurora generally tend to glow even more during solar storms. And it just so happens that our sun did produce quite a few storms in the last few years. But these aurora that are essentially half the size of the planet seem to be very unusual in that they are kind of patchy. They're basically known as discrete aurora. And the scientists think that they only glow above certain spots on Martian crust. 
very likely showing us the regions where there is slightly more magnetism, possibly due to the presence of certain magnetic elements inside the crust, which naturally could potentially help us discover certain deposits in the Martian crust, something we didn't know was there, but that's of course just a preliminary speculation. And because we believe that the solar activity is actually going to be increasing until 2025, when the sun is going to reach its peak, chances are we might see even more of these unusual formations and might discover something else on Mars we currently cannot even imagine. And because this is a relatively recent discovery, there might be something else going on here that we still don't understand. Either way though, this is very unusual, not something anyone expected, and potentially might lead us to discover something inside the Martian crust. And so those are the main discoveries from Mars as of May of 2022. But because of these recent missions and because of so many new observations from these missions, we're probably going to be coming back and talking about Mars in some of the future videos in the next few months. So make sure to subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.